Okay, real quick, just want to remind everyone that that this week is the last week to register for Jiu Jitsu for Tots. It's preschool age kids um, learning the basics of Jiu Jitsu, basically how to pay attention to class and just very, very basic stuff. It's a great class. We've already, we've already tested this on children, our own children, and, and the system works. Um, real quick, so I want to talk about uh, gun safety because that always comes up every time we have a situation like the uh, theater massacre in Colorado. Um, you don't really know what to do in a situation like that until it happens. However, um, it's very important that, you know, if you're in a martial arts program, that there is some kind of stress training or stress exposure. Uh, because uh, there's a very well-known martial artist who uh, tells a story about how he woke up in his house and uh, there was two armed gunmen standing over him. And even with all his years of training, he froze. But during that moment, his training kicked in and what saved his life was the little wrist, just a couple basic wrist locks and then the rest of his training took over. So, you know, when you, when you practice that stuff, a lot of people, you know, they, you know, they like the really fancy moves, but the wrist locks and things like that, they're called self-defense because they, they work in self-defense situations. Now, you know, if someone is shooting at you, in a perfect, you know, in an ideal situation, you would have a gun too, and you could shoot back. However, in this situation that happened last week, it's, you know, everyone feels helpless, and a lot of people they come up to me, and you know, you know, because of my martial art experience, they, they ask me, you know, what would I do in that situation? Well, I'm gonna, my answer is always, if someone has a gun pointed at me, I would, of course, I would like to have a gun too. However, um, this is part of my military training, so I'm gonna share some of that with you. Uh, the military um, has two ways of breaking down uh, defending yourself in a situation like that, cover and concealment, okay? Concealment would just mean hiding behind something. And many people hid, didn't move, and survived. So that's concealment. Cover would mean anything that you can hide behind that also provides concealment, person can't see you, but also would probably withstand a bullet. So cover and concealment. Those are the two things that you can do in a situation like that. Um, and the other thing is uh, stress exposure. Um, you know, you could, you could go to a gun range and start to practice with a firearm and that would make you comfortable, you know, hearing a firearm because sometimes when people hear a firearm, they freeze too, that, that there were some reports of that. So. Uh, if you're in a martial arts program, it's important that that program has some kind of stress exposure so that you are involved in being stressed and you know how to react and uh, cover and concealment, okay? Hiding and hiding behind something that can withstand a bullet.